Hello everyone and welcome back to an Unfiltered Gamer, a board game review. I'm Callie here with Michael hey. and we're going to be talking about the Stifling Dark by Sophisticated Cerberus Game. And Stifling Dark is a hidden movement uh, one versus many game that is for three to five players ages 14 and up and takes about 90 minutes to play. And the game is pretty simple. One player is the adversary or the killer and the other players are the investigators. Investigators are trying to gather evidence and do one of three different objectives, whether it be to uh, start up the car or open the exit gates or of course kill the adversary. And the adversary is attempting to defeat one of the players. On the player's turn, they're going to move and then they can use actions and finalize their turn by you know, attaching themselves to a space and, and doing one of those actions. And uh, the adversary is going to be able to do any of his actions while moving and he can take actions in between. There's a unique board with indoor locations and outdoor locations and places of obstacles. And then each player is going to be placed on the main board and they'll use their stuff on the big main board. And the adversary is mainly going to be moving off of the main board on their own unique board with a a hidden uh, placard that kind of blocks the secret individual board space that they have. The game takes place over rounds. At the end of the final round, the game is going to be over and the bad guy will win. Or of course, if one player is dead. And finally, the investigators win if they're able to accomplish one of the three objectives after they've gathered all their evidence. So let's take a look at how to set the game up, how to play, and of course, our review. So to set up the game, The Stifling Dark, it's pretty simple. Choose a adversary player and choose the investigators. The adversary is going to be at least the one we have here, uh, the butcher, but there are potentially other ones that are going to be included in the game. And then of the players, there are a large plethora of different choices you might have. Uh, the adversary is going to start with his own weapon and two unique skills, as well as his own player board, and you're going to include any tokens that might be included with that specific adversary with that specific board. You'll also put all adversary tokens next to that adversary player, and um, then you're going to include the uh, investigator tokens, for uh, stamina, for the flashlight, for movement, and for their main ability, as well as any specific tokens for them. And they're also going to get that player board and, of course, a flashlight token, which is going to mark uh, different locations on the board as they're trying to find the adversary. Uh, you're going to go ahead and uh, separate the different decks. There is the mitigation deck for wounds. There is the wound deck for the investigators to get from the adversary. And there is the condition deck, which is going to be doled out by the specific uh, bad guy you're playing against. So the butcher might deal out blindness to a player. On the other side here is going to be your event decks and your item decks. The event deck is for the specific board, which is going to be the sawmill, which will be told you how, which will tell you how to set it up in the main game, but it's pretty simple. There'll be a stack of basic ones, and then they get more challenging, and then there's a final one, which will last until the very end of the game. You also have the evidence cards for the sawmill, which when you pick up an evidence, you'll get to draw one of those cards, and you'll be able to use them if you want as investigators, but you don't have to, which is also nice. Cursed items and items. The investigators are going to be get it, gathering cursed items and items from this deck here. And the way it works is the adversary is going to have their own mini board, which will be they'll be placing down items with two to three spaces away from each of the adversary spaces. Um, and players, when they shine a flashlight or light up a space that has an item, that item will go onto the main board from the mini board. Additionally, the uh, the uh, adversary is going to be placing evidence markers in each of the buildings, one in each, and there's a total of five for a five player game, but that will change based on the number of players. And you'll either get extra evidence cards, or have to find less evidence, and you can check the rules for that example. And finally, there's going to be three unique end game conditions that you'll set aside, any end game conditions for the butcher that you will set aside, and there's also going to be uh, evidence items that you can use after completing all of the evidence that you see presented on the board. So get all five of the evidence, get that last objective, and you're pretty much done. The last thing that the game is going to come with is a bunch of tokens. There's light on tokens, there's dim lights, bright lights, there's no lights, you're gonna have dice you can set aside, any player or adversary tokens, there's door tokens, there's time tokens, and there's finally objective tokens, and a large vo volume of other tokens that you may or may not need in the game based on the type of characters and or adversaries that you're playing with. And finally, there's going to be the player reference cards, one for the, for the specific adversary you're playing, some for the players, uh, map spaces, icon glossaries, and the different types of successful ways you could accomplish the end game goal, such as stopping the adversary or fixing the truck. After you set aside, set, set the main board up, which is pretty simple, placing each of the characters on the green spaces with a little highlighted outline, and the main player board for the adversary, which is all of the item cards and the evidence cards, and then all the player boards 
afterwards, you're pretty much done setting up the game The Stifling Dark. The game is played in rounds. At the start of each round, you'll check for any round starting abilities, and then one player will draw a storm card, which is going to be in effect for that entire round. Then in addition, you're going to determine sort of what player order you want to go in, and the first player will get that first player starter token. Uh, then each investigator will take their turn in whatever order you determined. So you'll look at your, your player board and determine, okay, what is your speed at? That's the number of spaces that you can move. And in between taking movement, you can do one of several abilities. So interacting with the spaces is generally how you'll do that. Picking up items, dropping off items, trading items with adjacent players, so on and so forth. If after you've used your movement, you want more movement, you can lower your stamina by one to roll the sprint die and move that additional movement, taking other actions as well. Uh, if you end your turn, if you uh, do an involved action, such as uh, working at a computer terminal and interacting with that to light up an entire room, then you'll have to end your turn immediately. However, if you don't, you can choose to use your flashlight. So you'll move your flashlight charge down one space and then you'll be able to place your flashlight on the board from the base of your player uh, location and be able to illuminate those areas. So you'll want to look at where those lines are crossing and complete and your flashlight is completely engulfing the circle of that location. Give those numbers to the adversary so they can light up any uh, any items and or their player base if you have found the adversary. That will end your turn. And at the end of your turn, you'll check, did I sprint? If you didn't sprint, you can go ahead and place your stamina up one. If Did you use your flashlight? If you didn't use your flashlight, you'll get a charge on your flashlight back and so forth. After each of the investigators have taken all these actions, they can move in between them, of course, uh, then they are going to pass the turn to the adversary. And the adversary functions very similarly. Basically, the adversary is going to be able to move, and rolling a die is going to be based, uh, based on their base movement plus this die total. So if I have a base movement of 5, and I roll this die here, and I get a 3, I've got a total base movement of 8. The adversaries are definitely always going to move faster than the players, but the players are having the option to spread out. Uh, in between movement, I can take actions, and my main action are going to be I can break down a door, I can disappear, and I can stalk. That's just for the specific character, the butcher. Uh, when I stalk, if, uh, if the survivors are within a certain line of sight, and line of sight is pretty simple, it's a straight line and does your circle connect, connect to the circle that you are looking at, uh, then you're going to be able to do certain things, whether it be give players a spine tingle, or uh, you'll be able to disappear if you're no longer in line of sight of a flashlight or bright lights, you can kind of hide your character, which is basically a turn loss whenever you get found. Uh, you can break down a door, which will basically endure, in, involve a door token being put on one of the door spaces, and it'll turn into a crumbled door. Now, Normally doors start open. We'll talk about all that in a second. Um, but you'll be able to break down doors and then you'll be able to remove them completely if you want. And then there's also your three main abilities. Your three main abilities for the specific butcher mm -hmm. is going to be involving gathering stock before you can use them. You can eviscerate, which is a one time per round action that doesn't attack on a player. There's something like sinister gaze, which is going to allow you to give certain effects or conditions to other players. And then there's something called decay, which is says using a flashlight costs one extra battery for the next round. And some of the actions are going to be once every other turn. Sometimes they're once every turn. Sometimes they cost a stock or they don't cost a stock. And you'll have to look at each specific card to see, but mainly it's one attack and two conditional cards. And those are different to uh, each time you want to play, right? You can kind of yes, the uh, entire you have a complete customization want. to the character. There's over four, three or four attacks for the mm -hmm. killer, and then there's a bunch of different effects that you can choose. So you'll get a th total of three, including to us main specific actions that he can take. Yeah, and, and the butcher specific specifically has a certain uh, resource stock ability that yes. he's using with. And in order to even use most of your abilities, you you'll have abilities. to stock. Yeah. So let's talk about the main game board now that we have the basic idea. Basically, all the investigators move and take their actions. The uh, adversary will move and take his actions in any order, and you can cut in between movement. Mm -hmm. uh, but what about the game board? How does it all function? So what you're going to see when your game starts off is these four characters on these starting spaces, which are going to be these uh, teal... Green highlighted. Yeah, they're like, they're, yeah. They're like luminant green spaces. Uh, these spaces on the board are referenced as such. The circular spaces with no dots are going to be just basically 
basically dim spaces. You can walk on them, they'll cost one movement, and you can walk from one space to the next. That's one movement. As long movement. as they're connected by a line. Yeah, one movement, two movement, three movement. Plus, if you want to sprint, you could potentially move even farther using this die here. Uh, these spaces that have a basically a dotted line with a circle are pitch black. In order to walk into them, it's going to cost two spaces unless they're lit up for some reason. It could be that somebody shines a flashlight inside of a room, which will allow players to be able to move from one space into a dim to a dark space, and it'll only cost one. Every space is always gonna at least cost one. Um, or the ability to light up the room with a computer terminal, which like I said, we'll talk in a second. Uh, other spaces include the adversary space, which is not only spaces where the adversary might spawn, but also among the three spaces adjacent to it or on it uh, could be an item, which you'll be trying to look for when you drop flashlight beams because to see anything in this game you're going to need to light spaces up. You also have the computer terminal. Finally, we'll talk about it. Basically, when you go to the space and interact with it, it will end your turn, but it will light up one of the rooms, the room that you currently have interacted with the computer terminal, and you'll place one of these bright light tokens in that room, which will light up for the rest of the round. It will reveal all the items, as well as evidence, evidence. and even the adversary if they're in there. And then afterwards, this room will go to pitch black again. It could be lit up to be dim, uh, again by other means so there are ways to make the room dim and there are other means to make the room completely unable to be using light um, basically what you're trying to find in these rooms are the evidence when you get an evidence uh, token you'll be shining a bright light in one of the areas one of the evidence tokens is going to be found from the adversary placing on the main board you'll draw yes the evidence card you will look at it see what it does and choose to use it or not your main objective is to get five of them but mm -hmm. they could be used I'm not sure what do the evidence cards do exactly so there's different things sometimes they have uh, you know just nice things you can use for like kind of trapping the adversary or getting away from the adversary like this one lets you block a window so like similar you can close doors you can also with this ability block windows uh, there's some things that maybe give you a negative effect but also a positive effect um, give you items, give perhaps. Give you item, more items. So they're kind of like uh, double-edged sword cards. Yeah, they may help yeah. or may not help, and you can choose to use them or not use them. So Some it's, it's will nice place um, items that you may need for one of the end objectives later, so you kind of get it earlier than you would need, um, So which is nice if you want to go for that end objective. Like starting the car, this one can put out the fuse earlier for you. Okay. Um, there's also blue spaces. These are door spaces. Basically, whenever an investigator is next to it, they're able to interact with it by closing it. When they close it, the token is put on there. The investigator can obviously go through it. Um, they're able to uh, be, have the door bash. Let's say that the adversary is on the other side. They can use an action to bash it. And on the next action, the door can be completely busted down, which means that people can go through it. And How it can no longer be closed. Exactly. However, if an investigator were to go through a busted door, that door would be removed as well. So it's protecting you for a turn or two depending on how often you use it uh, after it has been broken. Um, and then I think there's only one other action space that's a really, really relevant. So it's going to be these window spaces here. Mm -hmm. When you go over a window and you move more than one space, you'll take a wound. And if you just move one space, I believe you end your turn and take an extra stamina loss. But it's yeah. a way of getting over it. Yeah, you can climb through the windows. It'll just cost you a little bit in your actions and or time and or wounds. I think it also gives you extra cost two stamina, right? To go over the windows. I don't um, know, there's, there's a certain amount. There's some other restrictions, but the main thing is wounds. If you go over it plus more than one space, mm -hmm. there's going to be a potential wound Like cost. you're rushing through the window too fast. Yeah, and you only get four different types of wounds. Um, additionally, I see yeah. line of sight, maybe. Yeah, yeah, line of sight. Yeah. So line of sight's pretty important too. Uh, this far, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That would be within seven lines of sight. If my character was here, you could not have this character have line of sight on this character because there is a vehicle blocking it. The same is said if a door is closed. Otherwise, you can have line of sight through it and a window. Mainly, it's going to give you just a straight line of sight. Mainly, you want to look at the white outline to yes. determine line of Does sight. Does a line touch it? You can also use some sort of straight edge to sort of determine if you have line of sight. Yes. And all of these are blocked by lines. You'll see how they all work. All of the building spaces are going to have a, a letter and a number, and all of the non-building spaces are going to have a number. So when you consider placement for your objectives um, or your evidence slash your items, consider looking at the building's letters and numbers. That's the main way you'll communicate with the adversary too, to reveal things with the flashlight. Okay, we're revealing spaces. 171, 156, 144, is there, are there any items or anything there? 
you can be given conditions, and when you do, you place them next to your character board, and they have a yeah. bunch of different types of conditions, whether it be blinding you, or slowing you, or hurting you in some way, or affecting your flashlight. Mm -hmm. uh, you have wounds. Whenever you take a yeah. wound, you can either take one face up or face down. Face down wounds are considered one wound, uh, which is one less than the total of four that you can have. Um, and the face up ones are a wound, and in addition, whatever effect. These are really bad. They'll you don't have want face extra up. effects that are negative. And there's ways to, though, flip those upside down. There's also inside. mitigation. And you can only wounds. take uh, three wounds. Your fourth wound will be... Yes, uh, that'll end then, you. Yep. Uh, the mitigations, or some of the wound cards have mitigation symbols, which are on the top right hand side. And mm -hmm. if so, you draw one of these and flip it over and put it next to that wound as a mitigation. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much everything uh, player, about the game, players right? Players do have abilities as well. Yeah, there's a specific player abilities. Each character yeah. has their own unique tokens, mm -hmm. and those tokens can be used either as a minor ability or as a major, depending. And uh, players are going to have that one major use ability token, right? Mm -hmm. So they can only use it once, and once it's used, it's gone. Yep, and there are ways to move around or something sometimes lose or gain uh, those ability tokens. Ah, items. Whenever you pick yep. up an item and you draw it, it's going to have a symbol on it. And you'll look at the symbol on the item. You'll look at the top right hand you'll side of each of the item cards. Or it through the deck. And you'll take that card mm -hmm. out. And that is a card that you can choose to use as well. There's also cursed items. You might think that they're bad, but in fact, they're kind of a double-edged sword as well. So you can use one like the Hexed Mirror. The adversary must place a uh, specific Shadow adversary token, token on the space where they begin their next activation, and you may not use your flashlight next round. So you get a little bit of information, but at the cost of not being able to use your flashlight. And there's a certain number of times you can use a specific type of item. Um, and I think now that is pretty much it. Uh, there is condition card, or these cards here that you draw every round that change the game in some way. The game is going to end after round 18, but the last one will remain in effect up until round 8. Team, and that may change based on whatever end game goals for the specific map that you are currently using. All right, so that's how you play the game uh, Stifling Dark. I know it seems pretty complex, but it's actually pretty simple once you get down to it. It's just a board and then the other board and a bunch of extra tokens and whatnot that you will use along the way when needed and the game tells you specifically how it's used. The Stifling Dark is a hidden movement game in that kind of horror, uh, tension sort of genre and that if you're one of the players that you you don't know where the adversary is you know that they're going after you and it definitely has that tension and that um with a thriller experience there, just like a lot of uh, horror stories and games in that nature. You might think of something like Escape from Aliens from Outer Space, mm -hmm. or Spectre Ops, or Letters of Whitechapel. Or video or... games like Dead by Daylight, yes. that sort of thing. Uh, the, the one about Jason as well. So you're rushing to gather up the evidence, and then also like looking behind your back, shining flashlight to try it, but you definitely don't have enough flashlight to always illuminate your path. So definitely uh, evokes that horror theme. Yeah, each Very of the well. characters have their own unique abilities and all mm -hmm. that, and it works really well with the horror theme. They have things that will put cans on the ground that when the bad guy walks over, it will trigger an alarm. <laughs> the killer is a stalker. He's walking around in plain sight, but you can't see him because it's mm -hmm. so dark, and he's right next to you. And there's a, there's a fear with this killer because, oh no, he can see all four of us, and he's within range of four. Where is he? We yeah. can't let him have this ability again because otherwise he's going to gain too much stalk, and he can use that stalk to kill us all. And so that builds the tension as the game goes on trying to get to that end game goal there's different ways you can succeed and you have options do you want to try and kill the killer oof tough but you can do it get the different parts needed for the truck in order to escape or do you want to simply try and power the exit gate and get out before time runs out mm -hmm. and all of those are vital options vi vi viable options and you're really it's up to you in the moment mm -hmm. what spaces are more realistic for you to try and achieve where all your characters are at how much time you have and all that kind of thing all while trying to shine the light on the killer the most important thing in the game is keeping the killer out of the game. Yep. And uh, speaking of the light, the quality of the game is, is really good. I love the big, big board. You need it this big so you can see all the numbers and you have enough space for your, your characters to move around and converse together about where you're going to go, what you're going to do. And the flashlight uh, is really cool component of the game where you actually physically place it out and illuminate the spaces. I thought that worked really well. One of the well. characters can do this. They and can sweep sh their yeah. flashlight. And yeah. it's, it's the awesome. abilities are awesome. It yeah. feels really powerful to do I, that. 
I agree. Really... The components, quality of the game are excellent. Everything about this game, as far as component quality goes, is top notch. Could yes. you have miniatures? Sure. You could, yeah. I think that could be fun. Um, I wouldn't mind seeing miniatures, I suppose, was my one thing. But really, <laughs> if they didn't include it, it wouldn't bother me in the slightest. There is a ton of cards, high quality cards. The adversary is so unique. The characters feel different and have unique tri tricks about them. Um, there are some ways to sort of heal you. I kind of wish that that was a thing, but I also know why it might not be a thing. I because... think, yeah, more because the, the adversary is pretty limited on how much they get, can attack, so that kind of made sense to me. And yeah, yeah, otherwise it'd be a lot four. of attacking and somebody mm -hmm. could instantly get one shot, so it kind of runs into that issue. Um, but otherwise, yeah, it just feels good. There's a yeah. ton of components to it, but everything is only needed on the occasion. There's an op option of different items, but you're not going to use all of them every game, so you're never going to see every item in the first five or six games. It's not likely. You won't even probably get all the items in, in the game each time you play, let alone getting all the different items in the deck. And even though there's a lot of tokens, really you're utilizing some of the main ones, and there wasn't too much I felt like Oh, I have to remember to push this down or this up. It was pretty straightforward and the round um, sort of cheat sheet let you remember, okay, take off all the adversary tokens here and it was an easy cadence Yeah, for that. graphic design works great in this game. Yes, and the yes, board, icon. the board mm -hmm. as well is easy to see. I know where to go. I know what options I have. The numbering was a good call for the board <laughs> on how to... Uh, to make things easier. For yeah, I've gotten no complaints about the uh, the quality of the game and the mm -hmm. artwork. Yeah, it's it, uh, definitely in line with that darker uh, feel there. I think there's not a whole lot of different artwork. The board, I think, and, and the characters are the main pieces of art, which are, are fine. They're nice. I think that uh, this game uh, resonates with the uh, one versus many horror video resonates. game genre. Uh, resonates. Resonates. Like resonates. Ooh, auras. Yeah. That's yeah, what yeah. I'm trying to say that at okay. least. The um, villain is basically like one of those guys. I play a lot of Dead by Daylight, so I'm really passionate about that game. And this game, when I sat down to play it, I read the rules. I'm like, this feels like it, but is it going to play like it? Mm -hmm. And yeah. Yeah, it's got that intensity. It's got the characters. They feel like they're different. And you can twists and whatnot and the artwork works just perfectly fine you have the kind of character art kind of in yeah. a piecemeal form you've got the board which is the, the most important the adversary layout. the butcher i think that's the best piece of art that's yeah. really nice yeah yeah <laughs> and i like i like the board oh, I mean, as well kind of the, 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 co the cover. cover as well yeah. is kind of cool how it works uh yeah I, I like the artwork for this game it works pretty well um it's pretty straightforward you're getting what you see here basically um the the gameplay uh, I think the gameplay is is really really good. Uh, there's a couple of things we got wrong in the live stream, so if you're watching that, uh, based on the rules at least, they have been changed. The adversary can only attack once each round. I thought that that was the case, so I tried to mitigate that as best as I could. Mm -hmm. uh, when the uh, deck of events runs out, you'll just use that last event, whatever that last event might be. So you'll keep it up and you can keep going until the round tracker yes. goes Yes, and out, the round's so. going to, end, it's gonna end the game at that point. So mm -hmm. there's gonna be that longer 18 round game. Um, Your first game will be a little longer, definitely. just like our live play, but yeah. uh, after that, I think 90 minutes is fairly accurate. Yeah, it's going to be about two and a half hours your first game, and afterwards, 90 minutes. The same thing as something like Fury of Dracula. It's not as quick as Spec Drops. Spectrum, um, uh -huh. With the gameplay, the one thing I would really actually recommend is uh, somewhere having something to write down each of the locations for the killer throughout the round so that they can keep track of like being honest their about their locations. Space. Yeah, it, like, sort just, of like Spectre Ops. Exactly, okay. like Spectre Ops. So that players can say, oh, where were you at these rounds? And if they made a mistake, they can like, explain to them, okay, you didn't go here and there, and that can cost. Because that can mess with games. If a player is supposed to only go eight spaces and they happen to go ten spaces on accident because they don't keep track of things. Or uh, they didn't realize some of the lines are not connected exactly so yeah, yeah you have and to watch so out those for can happen but mainly it's to keep everybody honest so they don't have to worry mm -hmm. about the honor system which should be a problem but for some players it is uh, otherwise the gameplay is excellent. Jumping through windows is a cool idea, going through the doors, turning on the consoles. Utilizing your abilities is so important and that's a really, I think that's a great component to the gameplay. Yeah, the flashlight is the most compelling aspect yeah. of the game. It's the most important. Uh, it's where you're going to be trying to stun the killer because when you stun the killer, in order for them to do anything in their next turn, they have to literally leave any lit areas and go back into hiding. And then they're basically done. They can't do anything except for like break mm -hmm. doors and move around. So they'll lose a turn every time they get spotted. And as investigators, that's your main objective. That's is to really spot good the killer. because 
the investigators move slower than the adversary. So utilizing that is really important. Yeah, and the adversary is trying to stalk them, trying to be within and range. And even just using the flashlight, even if you don't highlight where the killer is, you'll also be illuminating the items and evidence cards and be making it easier to move for your other players through the spaces. So that communication and teamwork is really important. I can and see, that's yeah. great. I can see a bunch of other characters uh, being added to mm -hmm. the game. Extra mm -hmm. adversaries mm -hmm. would be cool. I'm excited to see what those may or may not look like. Uh, additional boards and or making your do, own board. And what they do, then you'd have to like adjust your strategy based on the different adversaries. And you could add different spaces mm -hmm. for it. This is the uh, Dead by Day Daylight game I've been wanting for a long time in essence. It also has a vibes of the Friday the 13th game and uh, other other games in that kind of like tag genre. It feels like that in board game form. I saw the, uh, the Kickstarter for the Dead by Daylight board game. I was interested in looking at it. I was hopefully going to get a review copy but that didn't happen. Um, going through the rules for that one, this one would probably be my choice. If I were to back either one, I would probably back this one over that one. But I haven't played that one, so I'm willing to give it a shot and see what I think. But overall, I think this is kind of what I was expecting or hoping for in a game with the mm -hmm. genre of that type of quality. I'm overly ecstatic about this game. I think it's going to be really cool. I want the... Uh, uh, deluxe ultimate copy of this game because I think this game is going to be a hint, lot of fun. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm guessing there's going to be one. I, I have no we, idea if there's a deluxe we copy. We have no idea what the campaign will look like, what will be added. But uh, what's so here, if what's here yeah. is there's more of what's here, I am down. If they deluxify anything or add minis or whatever, I am also down for this copy. I... I, I, I give this game my seal of approval easily. I, I enjoy this game thoroughly, even with the mistakes that we made. Now knowing that, I can correct the gameplay and it'll be a lot more um, straightforward. I like uh, the choice too of the one versus many because if you want to play as the killer, it's really good and that's perfect for you. Or if you're not into that, you want to play more cooperatively, playing as the investigator is also awesome and a lot of fun. Yeah, negative wise, like I said, just having the, the, the writing down the rounds for the killer. And of course, mm -hmm. if you don't like suspenseful type one verse mini games that take over an hour and a half, uh, it's probably not gonna be for you. Uh, especially your first gameplay. You're going to sit there and play for about two hours and that's just what you're going to have to expect. There's a lot of stuff going on and players trying to talk with you or talk over you and like convince you of doing certain things. That's all entailing yeah. in a hidden movement But game. you're always giving the adversary information when you do that too. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 to me, this game is a solid slam dunk. I expect this game to fund. I expect it to fund well. I expect you to back this game if you like this type of a game. I think it's going to be one of those games that sticks out for a long time. And I want one copy next to my Spectrops, the shorter version of games like these, uh, so that I can jump into this one a little bit more if I want to play something like, a little oh, more in depth. You like this game? Well, let's set aside some time to play the Stifling Dark. Yes, good game, great game. Pick this game up on Kickstarter right now. Thank you guys for watching our review of The Stifling Dark. If you'd like to check it out, the link will be down in the description. A Kickstarter is coming soon, so watch out for that. And while you're down there, give this video a like, a thumbs up, as well as if you want to see a more review videos and live plays, definitely hit that subscribe and bell, bell notification. notification. Yes, to see more videos like this. Uh, we'd love to have you join the Unfiltered Gamer community and join us every Sunday evening, 6.30 p.m on twitch twitch we're going on twitch now and uh, join us as we play live play games just like this one including we played this one on and the stream. it's on youtube and we edited it down so that you can see the gameplay if you want yep and uh no, unfiltered gamer unfilteredgamer.com for lots more reviews including blog reviews and giveaways we have fun, tons of fun stuff on there that's about it. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, we look forward to seeing, seeing you guys, guys next time. time.